Well, some years ago on this program, we featured a guy named Pericone, Dr. Pericone, and he emphasized inflammation. And none of us were thinking too much about inflammation, but he was saying that this was really a serious health hazard. Well, now inflammation has risen to be public enemy number one when it comes to your health. The more doctors learn about it, the more they realize just how destructive it is. But there's good news. You can reduce the inflammation inside your body by controlling what you eat. Here's our health reporter, Laurie Johnson, with the lowdown on inflammation. No matter what type of health problem you're facing, chances are it began with inflammation. This internal irritation causes our whole body to break down. Whether you have a wrinkle in your skin caused by an artery being inflamed, or a wrinkle in your heart, a heart attack, or impotence, it's really the same process. And it's all caused, or at least it starts with, that inflammation in your artery. Dr. Michael Roizen is the chairman of the world-famous Cleveland Clinic's Wellness Institute. He says inflammation is the silent killer that has eluded the medical community for years. And it's only recently that we've understood that it has a role, and only recently that it has a really important or prominent role in causing diseases such as cancer, or in causing diseases such as heart attacks and strokes, or of causing the in infectious diseases getting out of control that we now have. Doctors know for sure that inflammation causes all kinds of illness. But what causes inflammation? Mostly an unhealthy diet. One that includes sugary drinks, sweet food, and refined carbohydrates such as white bread, pasta, and rice. Also hydrogenated oils, also known as trans fats found in packaged foods, fast food, margarine, shortening, and most peanut butter. And the third highly inflammatory food group is omega-6 fats. Causes your arteries to get inflamed, causes your immune system to get inflamed, and decreases your ability to fight infections, decreases your ability to find cancer cells and get rid of them before they cause cancer, and increases inflammation and atherosclerosis in your arteries. So that's the omega-6s. Unfortunately, omega-6 fats are everywhere. We cook and bake with them. They're in packaged food, fast food, and restaurant food. But if you know how to spot them on the store shelves and in the list of ingredients, you can avoid them. Omega-6 fats are vegetable oils, such as soybean oil and corn oil, but also peanut oil, grapeseed oil, cottonseed oil, safflower, and sunflower oils. So even though a certain food may contain zero dangerous trans fats, it may still be a bad choice because it's loaded with inflammatory omega-6 fats. A good example of this is store-bought salad dressing and mayonnaise. The truth is, omega-6 fats are technically okay, as long as you eat about the same amount of omega-3 fats. The problem is, most Americans eat 25 times more omega-6s than omega-3s, and that imbalance causes massive inflammation. Omega-3 fats mostly come from seafood. The ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is important. The higher the ratio, the more omega-6 or the less omega-3, the more inflammation. There are only a few sources of omega-3 fats. Certain types of fish or fish oil capsules are the best. Other less potent sources are walnuts, ground flaxseed, dark green leafy vegetables, and eggs fortified with omega-3s. Also, grass-fed meat is higher in omega-3s than grain-fed. Olive oil is a great way to reduce inflammation, even though it's not technically an omega-3, but rather its cousin, omega-9. Omega-3, omega-7, omega-9, we don't know why the oddness is good, but that oddness means that it decreases inflammation. 
but be careful not to get olive oil too hot. What happens with all the oils once you get above their smoke point is you denature them. That is, you change their character. So instead of having omega-9, they become a different oil, and in fact, they have a different structure that may not be healthy, and in the case of olive oil, we don't believe is healthy. So that's why you don't want to go over the smoke point of any of the oils. So for optimal health, eat an anti-inflammatory diet, one that's low in sugar and other carbohydrates, trans fats, and omega-6 fats, but high in the odd-numbered fats like omega-3 found in fish, omega-7 found in macadamia nuts, and omega-9, which is in olive oil. Wow. What a report. Laurie is here with us. Laurie, what you and Dr. Roizen are saying is that the American diet is just loaded with things that kill them. Absolutely. And you know, it's been said that 80% of the disease and illness that we face today is because of poor lifestyle choices. Yeah. So if we can get on this anti-inflammatory mm. diet, I guarantee people will live healthier lives. Well, you don't know it's there. I mean, you, you're eating along and you go to, to a fast food restaurant and you have a meal, you think, okay, this is cool. Right. But what they're doing is making your arteries inflamed? Absolutely, <laughs> and fast food, restaurant food, and packaged foods, the processed foods, yeah. those are the big three to avoid. You know, I must say, I used to think that safflower oil was one of the good guys instead of the bad guys, and now you all are saying that it's not really a bad one, but it's got to be in balance. Absolutely, that's, uh, that's true. Sense. Right, we were told that these certain um, oils were heart healthy, yeah. but we are eating way, way too many of them, and that disproportionality is what's causing massive inflammation, so we need to stop eating eating so many of the omega-6 fats. Those are the vegetable oils, right. the soybean oil especially. You know, it's been said that one-fifth of our total calorie intake is soybean oil, that one ingredient alone. So you really have to check that list of ingredients and look for soybean oil. Even though something may be trans fat free, mm -hmm. it still may be loaded with omega-6 right. fats. Inflammation. Now, what is it called? We're looking at dementia. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're looking at hardening the arteries, uh, atherosclerosis. We're looking at that various types of heart condition. We're looking at strokes. All of the above. Arthritis, diabetes, even behavioral problems like aggression yeah. and ADD, ADHD, and autism. These are all associated with inflammation. And this is cutting edge stuff. And I think in the future, okay. we're going to be hearing more about the dangers of inflammation. How many women, I mean, when they go to the grocery store, I mean, their husband may be uh, aggressive and beat them or something, and it's because of what they're eating. <laughs> 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 Ladies, Kill the inflammation before he kills That's right. you. That's right. And there are six main causes of inflammation. Okay, and I really hope our viewers can get this. Now, you're a smart guy. You went to Yale, right? That doesn't make me smart, <laughs> but it did. It, it, it so I went you, to Yale. I'm going to quiz well. you. What are the main causes? There are six main causes of inflammation. What do you think they are? Well, I would always say the, the greatest culprit is sugar. And yes. The, beyond that is white flour. Yes. And, of course, you got trans fats. Very good. So, anyhow, good. that's and then, enough. And what did we talk about today? We talked about the uh, wrong oil. Omega-6. Uh, Omega-6 oil. And then there are a couple other things, too. A sedentary lifestyle, yeah. stress, and pollution, which is smoking and other okay. uh, toxins that are in the environment. So, those are your main inflammatory problems and if you can get a handle on those stop eating the sugar the refined carbohydrates which are the white flours Again, the trans I, fats omega-6 fats fructose corn syrup we i know you had some expert that disagreed with me but more and more the, the research is showing that high fructose corn syrup has a uh, chemical in it that makes us want to eat more and it's, right. it causes fat. Right. Well, actually, all sugars are that way. Are. And actually, a lot of fat is that way, too. The more we eat, the more we want. They are addictive. And, uh, you know, God made our bodies 
perfectly, but he did not design them to be fed with 152 pounds of sugar a year, which is what most Americans eat. That's just destructive. It causes massive inflammation and it causes our bodies to break down. It only makes sense. You know, the, the, the uh, low glycemic diet is the one, is the low glycemic, the glycemic index. We've been talking about that for years, but now more and more, it's, this is the stuff that is killing you. Right. And I might also add, Laurie, that if you have a dog, it obviously reduces your stress levels, which reduces your cortisol, which makes you thin. Right. Well, you know what else reduces stress? is exercise. Amen. And again, God did not design our bodies to be sedentary. So if we exercise, we're killing two birds with one stone. Okay. We're moving, but also that's a natural stress reliever. Okay, well, yesterday I rode a horse and Today I exercise the dog, and shortly thereafter I'm going to ride a horse again. Well, good. I'm not so sure how cardiovascular of an exercise that is. You need I... to ride the way I ride, and then you'll see. What All right. Is cardio. that an invitation? Yeah, absolutely. You <laughs> I, are I've invited. seen your horse farm. It's very impressive. Yeah, well, I like animals. That that does something to you. The, the Reagan said the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man. But absolutely. Laurie, you're one last thing. How much? You, you know, I found this omega thing. I wanted to really do it. So I was taking two tablespoons of concentrated cod liver oil, mm -hmm. and I finally read the label, and guess what? <laughs> they said your recommended allowance is one teaspoon. I was taking four times too much, and it gave me heartburn. Right. Well, cod liver oil, mm, uh, the, the best fish oil is from salmon or the fish oil capsules that you buy at the grocery store. And according to Dr. Roizen, what you want to do is look at the label. You'll see how much EPA and how much DHA okay. is in each capsule. You want to eat and or take about 750 milligrams of DHA a day. And so that usually works out to about three or four of those big fish oil capsules. I was taking three or four thousand a day, and I think it has a tendency to make you have a little heartburn. But anyway, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it here. Do what Laurie says. Do what Dr. Royzen said. Live long, live healthy, and we'll go out at 100 together. All right. All right.